welcome to my channel. My name is Lindsay and this is Waldorf Inspired Roots. In today's video, I'm really excited to share the curriculum choices and resources that I've picked out for my son's high school creative writing main lesson blocks. He will do two four-week main lesson blocks that are spread out throughout the year and some of these resources and uh, curriculum choices that I found I'm really excited about. So if you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I would love to hear comments and feedback down in the comment section below. The first resource that I want to share with you today is actually a free resource that I found on a website called waldorfteacherresources.com. And the person who does this website put together a main lesson block that um, I believe she used within, I'm not sure if she was a Waldorf teacher at a school or if she did homeschool. Uh, either way, the, the main lesson block that she put together for creative writing looks amazing so it is going to go through two show not tell one question response a childhood memory a character sketch one or two poems and plus illustrating three of the above so this is going to be and this actually i believe i don't know if it says on here but uh this is a middle school curriculum or main lesson block that uh, she put together so I do have other resources I'm gonna pull in to make this, uh, and we'll expand on some of the things that are actually in here to make it more of a high school level main lesson block. But I did wanna just show you how this was set up. So uh, it is a three week main lesson block. Now we are gonna be doing two four week main lesson blocks throughout the year for creative writing. And so we may not, we probably won't actually separate our main lesson blocks the way she has her separated, um, but we will do the things that are in here, but probably in slightly different order. So the way that she, um, you know, set this up is week one, uh, you read and discover the imagery in poetry, and she said to do that every day. Um, and then there's a show not tell exercise, write around group activity, character sketch, and a childhood memory. She says to do it over two days for a couple of these things. Again, we may or may not do it um, exactly how she recommends um, because I am teaching a high schooler, not a middle schooler. He may be able to finish his character sketch in one day or maybe it'll take him more days. My 15 year old is not um, super fond of writing. It is his weakest uh, area and so the whole point in me doing a creative writing uh, main lesson block or two of them actually this upcoming year is because I'm hoping that he will find joy in just writing for fun and, and writing fun things and using his imagination. So uh, week two, she also has poetry, but it's reading and writing it. And then um, she has uh, different um, writing elements throughout and then uh, writing poetry as well. And then she also has some other, uh, she calls them opening surprise for 15 minutes. So it's just some opener ideas. Uh, some of them include bring an animal and talk about it, break a routine, dress down, dress up. Um, moving desks, which would be if you had a classroom and we don't. So <laughs> um, watching a short video, playing charades or scategories. Um, so these are just some of the, the ideas and then, or um, doing a chemistry experiment, which uh, we are doing a ke um, chemistry main lesson block for my son this upcoming school year. So. I mean, that would be kind of fun to discuss that as well. And then there's a writer's workshop with the quest, uh, question response, the show not tell, childhood memory, character sketch, poems and illustrations, and then also endings. Um, and then she's also got painting, um, you know, animal sketch. And so just uh, different ways to bring different uh, senses and different elements into creative writing. 
Um, and actually, I think there was one, if I remember correctly, that is talking about going outside. Yeah, describe a scene outdoors. That's always fun. I actually remember when I was in fifth grade, our my fifth grade teacher had us all walk uh, maybe a block away, and I grew up in the middle of the woods in Michigan, and there was this old abandoned barn that was very dilapidated and falling apart, and and uh, it had been there forever, and you passed it no matter where you went, um, and, and it was just kind of sitting back in a field, and he had us sit on the side of the road, you know, off um, kind of on this little hill, and we all had to just spend, you know, 45 minutes writing a story about, you know, anything we wanted, but about what we thought was inside. And I just remember that being um, one of the first writing assignments that I felt like I could write whatever I wanted. And it was such an amazing feeling having control over my writing. Whereas a lot of times in school, students are asked to write very specific things about specific things. And so it's really nice to give uh, children the freedom to uh, use their own imagination. So I'm really excited for that. And I'm hoping that this will help him uh, find some joy in writing and, and start to enjoy it a little bit at least. And then creative writing, even though we're gonna be focusing on fairy tales and stories and poems, this will help him throughout all of his writing for, for everything, forever, um, just learning some of the elements that it takes to write a story. So uh, the first thing she talks about is pre-writing and using all of your senses to um, you know, describe things. And then she goes into uh, sort of a, an opening uh, how-to or, or explaining what this um, main lesson is. And then it breaks it down into some of the elements that we had previously talked about as far as what we're gonna do. Now it goes into explanations about how to use those. So for example, this tells you how to do a write around story and what that is. I believe it's, oh wait, just one page. So the next one is character sketch. Um, and some of them are several pages. And then it also has a whole list of vocab words and descriptive words that you can use for that. The next page, we have childhood memory. And so you can see there's a lot of examples. And then we do start to go into poetry with this one. And it does give examples of the different kinds of poetry and how to write those. We have descriptive writing exercise. And it gives a lot of descriptions on how to describe things in more detail. Uh, we have question response writing and uh, so this talks about describing a wish. Um, there's a lot about wishes in this one in particular. Um, there is sentence combining, and then we have a very long, I'm not sure, I think that this actually might be a play. I'm not 100% sure, um, but it. I believe it's a play. And it's quite long, so I'm gonna skip a couple of pages. <laughs> um, and so this, yeah, see act two, um, and then I believe there's an act three too. This keeps going for quite a while. Um, so this is again, a free resource. You can just go on to the website. I will link it below. And if you just type in creative writing in the search bar at the top, it will bring up the whole thing and there's individual things to click on and then print. Some of them are multiple pages and some are one page, but if you print them all, that's the, you know everything printable makes up what I have here. And then there's another additional story and I believe that takes us to the end. So, and those are just some examples. So this is one of our curriculum choices that we're gonna use. The next curriculum choice that I want to share with you is actually one that I am beyond excited about actually. Um, it is Lessons from Grimm, How to Write a Fairy Tale by Shauna Slayton. I got these on Amazon. Again, I'll link them below. And it has, you buy them individually, but I did buy all three. And it has Lessons from Grimm, How to Write a Fairy Tale High School Workbook for grades nine to 12. And then we also have Writing Prompts from Grimm, a fairy tale themed workbook for grades seven to 12. So let me show you, I'm gonna start with the, I guess you would call it the textbook, <laughs> um, and I will show you how she breaks it up. So the very first thing that I actually wanna show you is not the table of contents, 
I wanted to show you in bold on the very first part of, of the introduction, it says, once upon a time, there was a character who lived in a setting and had a problem plot. Fairy tale magic intervened or interfered and everyone learned a lesson theme. That is how she arranges the entire um, you know, textbook and I love it. I think it's genius. Um, so the very first chapter is Once Upon a Time and it talks about that genre. And the second chapter is There Was a Character and then it goes into all of the things that make up the protagonist, antagonist, side characters, supporting cast, magical helpers, and more. The third section is who lived in a setting, and it talks about many different common fairy tale settings, but you could apply the lessons you learn here to any setting in any story you wanted to create. Uh, the fourth section says, and had a problem plot, and it talks about different types of problems. Uh, the structure of setting that up, um, you know, plot twists and things like that. And the fifth section is magic intervenes slash interferes. And it talks about, you know, magical objects, enchantments, curses, blessings, and so on. Uh, the sixth section is, and everyone learned theme. And so it talks about examples of theme and a clash of theme. And then we talk about fa uh, faith and fairy tales. So it does have a section that talks about uh, some common faith related things that that will um, oftentimes uh, come up or, or be um, talked about or introduced within the classic Grimm's fairy tales. Um, but it does talk about faith of Grimm's allegory, illusion, and spiritual awareness, people from the Bible, and biblical themes. And the last part is putting it all together. And so it goes through some exercises and how to, you know, put that all together. So I am just going to quickly flip through. There are exercises um, in these and also explanations. And it looks like it's going to be a super fun book and a fun, you know, a fun a thing to to work through so the workbook the high school workbook for grades 9 to 12 that goes with that is actually set up exactly the same way it does talk about uh, in the first section it talks about find your fa fairy tale voice not always what you think character setting plot magic and theme and then the second two is brainstorming your fairy tale and it talks again about character setting plot magic theme time to write and where to go from here. And so it has uh, examples, tons of examples about characters and, um, you know, and setting and, and different uh, things to kind of get you started for each of the, you know, the categories. And then it also has a ton of space for you to brainstorm and come up with your own. And then when we get to the second section, which I believe, I believe this is it here, possibly. Uh, yeah, section two. Um, that's when it gives us more like worksheets to work through and lots of blank space. And it does have some, some outlines and things in the middle, but it gives, you know, as you can tell, it's kind of like a worksheet and we will copy these instead of writing directly in the book. That way we can use them for my younger son later when he's ready for these. But it goes through and then there's even some pages toward the back that have um, you know, uh, more of a fun sort of outline in, in creating this, but it's, it goes through and really delves deep into, you know, um, creating the character plot theme and things. Uh, and then at the very end, it says time to write your fairy tale. So all the, of the characters you developed and the theme and the plot and the setting and all of that, you would then transfer into the ending and they give you quite a few pages at the end that are all for writing your fairy tale. So this would be your final fairy tale. Now, instead of doing it here or copying this, we are a Waldorf inspired family. So we will be doing a main lesson book, which is basically kind of, I would describe it like a sketchbook and you can draw or you can write but it's blank pages, so there's no lines. And typically in the younger grades, it would be a large book. I, I believe they're 
13 by 20 or something. So they're quite large. In Once you start getting into upper middle school and high school, uh, they do typically become a little smaller. I believe the book that we're going to use for this is going to be like 9 by 12. And so he will write and illustrate his fairy tale in that. And so when he's done, he will have a fairy tale, uh, essentially. And the next Part of this is writing prompts from Grimm and the way, and it's a fairy tale themed workbook for grades seven to 12. Now, the way that we're gonna use this at the beginning of our main lesson time, we like to either read poetry or picture books or um, play a game or do warm up activities to kind of get our brain working and and kind of get our inspiration flowing and things like that. So uh, this is gonna be one of the resources that we use for that. And basically it is just set up with beginning prompts, middle prompts and ending prompts. So, um, and I believe there's 32 prompts in total. And so uh, the beginning prompts would give you a beginning and then you would write the middle and the end um, from there. The middle prompts give you the middle prompt. You write the beginning and the ending around the middle prompt. And the ending, same thing. You write the beginning and the middle and it gives you the ending. And so you would have to write it to the ending. So um, again, we probably won't write in this. I'll have him write this in a separate notebook of some kind, but we'll see when we get there. Um, but this will be a great addition to kind of be our opener. Now, some of the other resources that I wanna talk about the first one anyways, is an illustrated treasury of Grimm's fairy tales. And this is illustrated by Daniela Drescher. Now this is the original um, Grimm's fairy tales and she just added illustrations to them. Now um, be mindful that some of the original Grimm's fairy tales have elements in it with the language that they're using um, or you know certain scenes or, or whatnot that can be a little horrific or gruesome. And so just be mindful of that. So maybe it would be a good idea to read the fairy tale prior to uh, having your child read it, no matter what age you're, you know, you're, um, you know, teaching or, or what age your, your children are, it might be a good idea to read it beforehand. Now the illustrations in here, typically you'll see, um, you know, a a little something on some of the pages and then there's one main illustration per story and I'll just kind of flip through I believe there's like 30 or so stories in this book and um, with a middle school or high school student even the slightly horrific elements um, are probably fine they're you know for most kids it would be fine but if you have a child who um, is um, that you feel you don't want them to, you know, hear some of those things, or, or um, that they're not emotionally ready for that or whatnot. Just be mindful that there are some things in there that might be a little startling to, you know, some especially younger kids. So the way that we work it, there are plenty of other um, versions of the Grimm's fairy tales that you can buy in picture book form that uh, edit some of the horrific or gory um, details from the originals and those would be fine. Because my son is in high school though, I do want him to read the original Grimm's fairy tales. And yes, there are 30. And um, a lot of them you will know, a lot of them have been turned into Disney movies, but the Disney version is quite different in some circumstances than the original. So um, again, just be mindful of that. But we will be reading those as our openers and to give us inspiration for our own fairy tales. And then I also have some books of poetry. Now the first one that I wanna show you, or the first uh, set actually, there's Spring, Summer, Autumn, and Winter. And they are by um, Windstones Press. I purchased these from A Child's Dream as well. And they are books of poetry and songs. And some of the songs are quite, um, from, what, from what it appears, <laughs> I haven't tried playing them yet, but they look like they should be fairly easy to do on a pentatonic flute 
or a recorder. So uh, we may try to learn some of these songs as part of our, you know, um, main lesson block as well to bring in some musical elements to our day, but the rest of it is poetry. So these would be great for inspiration for writing our own poetry and also great for, you know, starting our day and sort of getting our creativity going. The next one is also a book of poetry. It's an illustrated book that I have had since my 15 year old was a toddler. It's a child's book of poems by Gayo Fujikawa. The illustrations are wonderful and there are a ton of poems in here and it does have an index of authors in the back and a lot of, actually all of the authors are very well-known authors. And just to kind of run through a few, we've got Lewis Carroll, we've got Charles Dickens, we've got Emily Dickinson, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Eugene Field, uh, you know, just to name a few. I mean, there's a ton, but there's very well-known poetry authors in here. And then they just, um, Gayo Fujikawa added illustrations. Some are black and white, some are in color. Let me see if I can find a color one just so you can see the difference. Um, and they are wonderful illustrations, very whimsical, very beautiful and uh, very dreamy. So um, this is a wonderful addition. And now the, the Grimm's fairy tales and the books of poetry that I've just showed you are actually in our morning basket for my two and a half year old and, and the preschool kids that um, I um, teach. And so uh, they, these are all things that we typically will read and they love them. And so my 15 year old, who's not as big of a fan of poetry for some reason, um, I'm hoping that he will like them as well, just because they're simple and whimsical and fun. And it'll be fun to add in this bit of whimsy into our creative writing, uh, since we're focusing a lot on fairy tales. So the next two things that I want to talk about are games. They're very similar types of games. These also, um, I use, these are in our um, morning basket for my preschool. Um, but the first one we're gonna talk about is by Eboo. It's for three and up. They're creative story cards and they have many decks. This is just one of them. It's the mystery in the forest set, uh, but they have several. And so how you can play with different ages, uh, there are instructions here, but one of the ways you can play is to um, allow your children to choose one to three cards and tell a story based on those. Or if you have a group of kids or multiple kids, you can have each of them draw one card and then one child would start and, and tell a story based on their card. And then the next child would add on to that um, telling the same story, but adding on using their card. So that's another fun way. And my son and I may take turns doing that as well. Now it does also have a part that says stories by adults. And so um, you can, it says to let the child select seven or eight cards and then the adult would tell a story. So in our case, my, um, my high schooler will select, you know, seven or eight cards at random, um, you know, maybe flipped over or just draw from the deck and tell a story based on those and just try and really focus on uh, descriptive words and um, things like that. So I'm just gonna quickly kind of go through these just so you can see what the pictures are. And like I said, there's many different decks. And so um, these are from A Child's Dream as well. And I will link their shop below. So here are these, I just think they are so uh, beautiful and whimsical. I feel like I'm using that word a lot today. Uh, but yes, we love things that are whimsical here. <laughs> so, all right, so that is that. And then the next game is kind of the same concept, but instead of having cards, um, and I actually picked this up in the Target dollar spot, and I believe it was, um, I think it says somewhere, nope, maybe not, I think it was $3. Um, so very inexpensive, but basically you get dice and you would roll the dice and tell a story from the dice. Now there is dice that has, um, different things that go. So we've got a pirate ship, a hot air balloon, a dump truck, a submarine, a rocket ship, a race car. 
And then we've got one with objects and it's got a vine, a treasure map, a key, musical notes, fire, sunglasses. Um, we have one that is weather themed and it, so we've got a tornado, um, lightning, a cloud, a snowflake, a sun, a windy symbol, and then we've got animals. So we've got a sloth, a monkey, a dog, a bear, a cat, and a toucan. And then we've got more objects. So we have a tree, a volcano, mountain, igloo, cactus, and stars. And then we've got people. So we have a race car driver. A, it looks like a child hiking. Um, and a superhero, a firefighter, an astronaut, and a pirate. And so uh, you would roll the dice and just tell the story. And so with my son um who is 15 he you know i'll just try to have him tell the most descriptive story he can and and really draw whatever you know inspiration he he can think of to tell the story but these would work it's for three and up so my two and a half year old who loves rolling dice will love this game just for that but um he he'll probably just go through and tell me what the things are on the dice and that's probably all I'll get from him but some of the other preschool kids who are uh, getting to a point where they're very creative will probably have a lot of fun starting to make little stories with these so that's that the last thing or two things that I'm going to share with you actually are not for this main lesson block but this year will be our first year that my son is not doing a um, language arts uh, subject um, as its own standalone subject. He's just doing the two four-week main lesson blocks of creative writing. So in order, and the reason for that is because he's kind of gotten through all of the important um, things that he needs to get through with, um, you know, most of language arts with grammar and, um, you know, his ability to read and his reading comprehension and and all those things in editing. So we really wanted to focus on writing, but I don't want him to lose the skills he's already learned. And so we do something where every morning he works on a daily basket or a morning basket. And the things that are in that are things that he already knows, uh, most of them. And it's things that it's just to expand on what he already knows or to retain it and, and uh, practice it and keep using it so he doesn't lose it. And so, uh, every day he is already expected to and required to read from chapter books and throughout all of our main lesson blocks he will have quite an extensive list of books from our American history main lesson blocks which I've already put, um, put videos up on all of the resources and books and things we'll be reading for that but then also he'll have books that he gets to choose on his own that he wants to read that are chapter books and he'll also have some books throughout the year that are required reading, in my opinion, that are classics that every high schooler should be reading. And so he'll have some of those as well. So that's how we're gonna tackle reading. And then he does book reports or alternative book reports. And I can do a video that talks about some alternatives to the traditional book report um, and, and fun ways to do a book report. Um, but he'll be doing that for reading. And then this will cover writing. So the main thing that I want him to practice is grammar and usage. So um, these daily warm-ups books, we have several. We've got one for writing, one for reading. And these are uh, five to 10 minute daily lessons. And there's enough for 36 weeks, every day for 36 weeks. And this book in particular, the grammar and usage book is part uh, covers parts of speech, sentences, phrases, clauses, usage, verb usage, pronoun usage, adjective, adverb usage, mechanics, capitalization, and punctuation. And it does have an answer key. And so as you can see, each lesson, daily lesson, he it'll say, you know, what it's going to talk about or what it's going to cover. And then it gives examples and gives the lesson and he'll use just a, you know, a standard uh, line notebook that he will uh, write his, his, you know, response to this or answers or whatnot. And this will be something he does every day, and it's just a daily warm-up just to kind of keep him practicing 
with grammar and usage. And then he's got his writing daily warm-up book. And even though he's doing, um, you know, two four-week main lesson blocks of very intensive writing, I still want him to be writing all throughout the year. So this one, and I did not see a content skirt. I guess there isn't one. Um, but each one is, again, you have different lessons and it'll tell you what to do and then that's what you would do. And so some of these are writing prompts and some of them are, you know, fill in the blanks as far as uh, talking about different parts of speech. Again, just to kind of keep you going with that. And uh, so this is kind of what it looks like. Now, with all of the things that are in his morning basket for his daily work, in total, he spends an hour to an hour and a half doing daily work, but they're all short little things uh, in different subjects. You know, there's there's quite a bit in his basket. Now, I am planning to do, I believe my next video, in fact, is going to be showing all of the things that are going to be in his um, daily basket, and um, that way you can get an idea of, you know, what that is gonna look like. And, uh, so yeah, the, these will be in the video with the, you know, daily basket um, in addition to all of the other things that I will be showing for that as well. But I did want to show these here as well, just so that you could see the other things that we'll be incorporating to supplement his, um, you know, language arts. So um, I hope that you were able to get some inspiration and ideas if you are putting together a creative writing you know main lesson for your students and there were some really great resources you know here and uh, we are i'm thinking we're gonna have a lot of fun doing you know this main lesson block so so if you like this video please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I would love to hear comments and feedback in the comment section below.